Okay, hello, welcome back to another game of chess. Today we are facing the move d4. I'm going to play c5 here, the old Benoni. The elo, yes, it's dropped, unfortunately. Let's address the elephant in the room here. 2100. I was 20, nearly 2200. I was I was pushing the, uh, the boundary of 2200. However, I've been very busy recently. Uh, I'm playing only, a, you know, just, just not focusing while I've been playing chess. So today, let's get a, let's get a win to redeem that. We've gone knight f6, g6. I'm kind of just going for like an Indian setup here. Uh, they take on c5 and probably are going to play b4. Do I feel good about that? Maybe I do not feel good about that. I'm going to play a5. We're just going to play some weird moves. I think a5 makes sense because if b4 we want to take take and maybe play knight to c6. This could get very, very dangerous very quickly. But at least we're not playing a London system, which could have been the case when they played d4. So you've really got to take a second to be grateful for these kind of things. Now... They go for some kind of g3. I was going to say Catalan, but it's nothing like a Catalan. Okay, how do I go about attacking this pawn? I kind of like knight a6, honestly. And I'm, I'm just going to play it. We're playing some very strange moves here. a5, knight a6. And uh, trying to recapture on c5 like that. They probably should just carry on and develop. Give up the pawn. Because I've had to go to a lot of trouble to recapture it. Because um, I was just not paying attention when they played c3. However, yeah, they do go for that. Right, let's take. Now we've got an interesting situation where both the knights fight for the e4 square. We can fianchetto our bishop and castle probably very easily. And it's not so easy to kick our knight because takes, takes. You open up this diagonal uh, for my bishop. So they attack the knight with the bishop, but placing it in front of the e-pawn, which could stunt their development a little bit. I mean, I say that, I might be about to do the same thing and put my knight in front of my e-pawn. Or, I could play a move like b6. Mm, that really opens this up. There has to be a tactic there. Let's just completely ignore that I even said that. And let's play knight to e6. Okay, we've got a very, <laughs> a very intriguing setup going on here. Strangely symmetrical um, with the fianchetto and the two pieces in front of the f and e-pawns. The queen comes out here. Okay. Probably they're just trying to put pressure on here. I do have the move a4. Which honestly, I, I really just, I'm so tempted to play. I'm just going to do it. I, why not? Why not? We're playing a4, a5. I mean, a5, a4 rather. Um, we've got a knight on e6. We went knight at a6. They want to trade the queens? You know what? Let's play a Magnus-like endgame. This is, this is what we're, we're going to voluntarily step into an endgame here. Castle kingside and say, right. There is, I don't know, it's a very nuanced position. Um, there are no immediate tactical implications of anything, I don't believe. They have to develop their knight, but if they do, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw knight a3 here. Because my main idea with this pawn is going to be to try and soften up this diagonal and exploit it with the bishop. So they attack my pawn. Yes, it's defended. We need a way to develop this bishop anyway, so most likely d6 is a good move just fairly fairly non-committal with the pawns we don't want to necessarily whack it on d5 when we don't have the move e6 to back it up so i think d6 makes a lot of sense and then yeah i'm, I'm genuinely oh they want to trade a pair of knights does that trade benefit me i don't know what if i went rook a6 you take here i take your bishop you take my rook i just recapture exchange sacrifice I have a bishop there. <laughs> it's kind of hard to make the argument for that. Although this bishop has like surprisingly few moves right now. I If I take, they take with the bishop probably. Then the bishop will have quite a few moves. I could play e5. Knight takes, bishop takes, e5. Bishop back to b6. Does rook a6 win? Or at least forces the bishop back to e3, right? Okay, we're going to take this. My knight's in the way of my e-pawn. They take with the pawn. Oh, I guess they can go to c7. Wait, rook a6, bishop c7. Rook c6, bishop b8. Are you serious? We're going to go rook a6. Lift the rook and we... Uh... Wow. They, go hit. they can go to b8. This is strange. This is very strange. Although, hold up. Are we not just going to chase the bishop round our pawn? If we go here, they go to b8. 
then we move our light square bishop, for instance, to, let's say, d7. Just so we don't have to consider anything over here. Then bishop a7. Then I come across with the other rook. I think we're trapping... The whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa! Let's not play that move. What is wrong with me? Okay, we want to keep this, this here. I'm really interested in trapping this bishop. I kind of think, does knight to e8 do it? We can't go here, obviously, because this hangs. Knight e8. Bishop here. Rook a8. Whoa! Boys. Oh, this bishop d8. I didn't even think about that. This is such a strange... This is just strange. I have no other words. Just very strange. Right, if we want to keep this bishop sort of encapsulated in our position, which I, I do kind of want to do because I feel like I might be trapping it, then instead of pushing the pawn and then letting it out, maybe to g5 so it can retreat back down here and then it's very safe. Maybe instead I play bishop f6 and I just hold on to the pawn. Now there's only really a reason to do that if I can then exploit the bishop for being here. So bishop f6, let's just say knight c3 for example. If I go knight g7, bishop c7, move my bishop and play rook c8. But if I move my bishop, then this is going to hang. I hate this game. Right, I'm going to play bishop f6. I, I just I just like this. It's just funny. It's just very, very funny. To just <laughs> desperately try and restrict this bishop's movement. Now, they could go for some kind of, like, e4, e5 idea, for instance. That might work. Although, we could probably take on b2 in the end. Because this is still a very soft square. And we still have a3 ideas. I don't know. This is this is strange. But they do go knight c3. If I go knight g7, like I said. Bishop c7. Oh, but now the knight's going to jump in and defend the bishop. Oh. What if I just ignore all of this and play a3? Why not? <laughs> Why not? I mean, this knight was putting pressure on there anyway. We're going to play a3, soften this diagonal up. They do take, which I'm surprised to see. Because now my rook is uh, probably very active. I could take there straight away. But I feel like the more thematic Grandmaster rider is just to leave this here. I think... This is so strange. This is so, so strange. Knight g7. Bishop here. Knight to e6. Right, knight g7. Bishop c7 is forced, I believe. Then I'm going knight e6. And we hit the bishop. Again. And hit the bishop here. And there's there. And there's there. This is all held. Now, you could defend the bishop. Or you could go bishop b8. They defend the bishop. Okay. Now, what I could do is take, take, and just say, listen, I'm happy to have won the bishop pair. Takes, takes, rook a3. We can't really put more pressure on this. And if I move my bishop... Oh, we can with the... Because we, we can move the bishop now. But there's this. But I take? You take and I take? Does this make sense? Bishop d7. You can't move the knight because I'm just going to take your bishop. But bishop d7, they take here. I take their knight. They take my rook. I recapture. I'm going to go for this. I want two pieces... For the rook and pawn. Then I'll have a bishop pair. And the rook will have some open files to work with down here. I like this. I like this a lot. Now there might be complications. I could imagine there are complications with moves like d5. Although I don't imagine d5 works. Straight away. Maybe it does. e5 takes, takes. No, but then rook c8 maybe and we win the bishop no because they can take on here maybe d5 works i think most likely they, they take here and then it's a matter of taking here they take my rook i take here then they save the bishop with for instance bishop a5 probably rook a8 bishop 
B4 maybe? And then does this pawn hang in the end? With knight takes? Threatening maybe a little fork of the, the rook and bishop. I'm thinking we see a line. Bishop B7. Bishop B5. Bishop A6. Bishop A6. Bishop A5. Rook A8. Bishop B4. Knight D4. Ah, they wouldn't play bishop D4, would they? They'd just play bishop C3. So maybe let's not provoke that. Maybe let's just take straight away before rook a8. They do go for this. I don't know what. I just had an intuition that that would work. I should have just spent my time calculating that. This is going to hang though. I There's too many things to think about here. Okay. I can take this. They take this. Then I can just take this. Is uh, Like surely there aren't too many things to think about. What if I just take here, actually? They've just shut off their bishop. Why would I let them open it again? If I just take here, they take here, then they hit my rook. So takes, takes, I take their rook. They take my rook. I recapture. They recapture. <laughs> I think it's this, boys. I think it's this. We grab the knight. They have to take our knight. Fine. I'm going to take this. We take the rook. Now maybe they take on here, but then we have rook a7, and we attack both bishops, so I don't think they should. They can obviously take on f7, and if rook f7, do they have bishop d5? Oh my goodness. So if they take here, I might just have to play king g7 or king h8, which might not be a huge problem. They do take here, right. Here, I think they just have this move, bishop d5, and we lose a rook for no reason. So I'm going to play king g7 instead. Leave the pawn here. Have I just really messed this up? No, but th this is trapped in the end. You're joking. Here. This is trapped in the end. They take on b7. Boys, 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 boys. This bishop, this has been the whole game. This is ridiculous. They take on here, hit both my rooks. I pick up their bishop. They take my rook, I take here. So they defend the bishop. This is insane. This is some really insane chess. Now I can do things like pick this up and pick this up. But I have to be worried about them taking here now. It's so complicated. Bishop c6 maybe? And if bishop takes, I play not rook takes because then bishop a5 and the bishop escapes. But if bishop c6, bishop takes, I play pawn takes. And the bishop has no moves. And we defend b7 by doing this. And I think we win. I think we win. It's felt like we've been on the edge of trapping this bishop for, I don't know, how many moves. Takes, takes, rook a6 was on move 14. We are now past move 20. This has been over 10 moves of trying to trap a bishop. And I think we might have done it. Honestly, I do not care about what the engine says about this game. This is so fun. We've just hunted down a bishop. This pawn's going to hang. These pawns are going to hang. I actually, actually, no, I can't wait to analyze because if this is even close to objectively correct, I am some level of machine. I'm feeling good about this. The time shouldn't be much of a problem because, uh, you know, I've got a minute and a half and the game's relatively simple. Like, we're going to see a bishop come off the board. Um, probably, maybe even two. Like, for instance, if we see takes, takes, and then, I don't know, some desperado for the pawn here. Okay, they just go for the desperado for the, with the pawn straight away. Now we have a rook for three pawns, and those three pawns are going to fall very, very quickly. Okay, um, let's just go here. Right, this is this is solid. They defend this. Okay, why don't I take on here? Fine. This is anchored down. We've picked off one of the pawns. I play d5. Now oh, this is all anchored, and we've intercepted the bishop's defense of a2. And king f6. And where's this bishop going? So they defend it? Have we trapped the other bishop? Are you serious? We've trapped the other bishop. Guys, 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 guys. If you haven't liked the video, subscribed eight times on eight different Gmail accounts, resignation. We trapped both the bishops. Let's analyze that game. Okay, so here we are in the analysis. 92% accuracy. 
two mistakes, two inaccuracies. That doesn't sound amazing, but for this game, I am baffled that it was that accurate. Um, the mistakes were little blips here with... Oh my... The mistakes playing A5 originally and A3. For those of you that can't visualize that, I'm just going to now go through the game. Um, all my ideas of the A pawn were just a mess. However, that means that the trapping the bishop was great. Right, right. We're just going to get through this. This is... Uh, yeah, look at this. Straight away, mistake. Okay, we've got we've got half the mistakes dealt with by move four. If they went for this, we would have gone takes, takes, and uh, knight to c6. Then if they go for this, I guess we oh, we have queen a5 here, and we just pick this up. Okay, and if they try and defend, then the idea is to take, take, and pick up the rook. So a5 had its ideas. It prevents b4. However, it's just kind of a waste of a move. Knight here. They can probably eventually get a knight on uh, on b4. Knight a6 though makes a lot of sense and is one of the best moves okay bishop g7 oh no we take the pawn bishop g7 the knight comes back a4 is the best move nice temple on the queen we trade this off castle here d6 okay they go knight here takes takes and from here we've got a slight advantage now all i'm thinking about is trying to trap this bishop so i go rook a6 force this knight back bishop d8 forced Bishop f6 best. Knight comes out. Knight g7? Oh. <laughs> I forgot I just threw this in for no reason. Um, the reason this is bad is because they can carry on doing something here. Them taking just blundered it straight back um, because, like, it just, I mean, this was just a brief intermission in the whole plan of the game. Uh, it would have been very smooth if I hadn't just randomly decided to throw in a3. However, they do take. Knight g7 now best. Bishop c7, knight e6, and the knight comes in here. They had to go like this. They went this way, allowing bishop d7, and we're tactically winning. And if you go a4, I can play rook takes a4. You can go back and attack my rook. I can probably, yeah, just take here, here, and take here, and just be much better. And even if you go like this, I guess... Oh, I'm picking up the rook, I guess. Okay, very, very interesting stuff. They went the wrong way, basically. They had to go this way, probably putting pressure on my bishop as well. Okay, anyway, what we see is instead bishop d7 and d5. And now the best move here is, I believe, to take... Oh, no, it's to take on a1. Okay, all of these are really good. Taking here, taking here, taking here. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. If bishop d7, if they take here, we take, they take, we take... They go bishop a5, then we can pick up this pawn. And we have a bishop pair, which, like, the material is even. But we're so dominant, because the bishops are great. These pawns are terrible, we're going to pick them up. Um, and, look, their best move is even just to sacrifice straight away, because we're actually threatening uh, some some check, picking up this pawn and discovering onto the rook. And if the rook moves, we can just do this anyway. Uh, probably come on, like, okay, not immediately here, but you get the picture. Instead, we saw, we saw d5 takes, takes, takes here. Pawn takes, and importantly not this, well, not importantly not that, because uh, actually this wouldn't have been a big problem because we could have saved our bishop. I just got a bit a bit excited uh, about playing interesting looking moves like king g7, just not taking that pawn. And then rook c8. This is insane. And rook c8 and the bishop's just trapped. They defend it, bishop c6, and the game's just over. Because if they take here, we take like this. Importantly not with the rook, I think. Oh, we could have gone this as well, and it's pinned to the rook. This was just disgusting. This was just all round disgusting. But instead, after trapping that bishop, finally, we see this trade off. Go here, here, here. And then the poetic ending of the game. And we didn't trap the bishop immediately here because it could have retreated. But after they go for this, takes and uh, yeah, this bishop is actually now trapped. They decided to resign. Probably they were, they had enough of their bishop getting bullied on c7. Um, what a weird but fun game. Thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I know I haven't uploaded in a while. I've been very busy over the past couple of weeks, but hopefully you enjoyed this one. As you can see, probably by this very plain background and the lighting change and maybe slight audio change, uh, I've now moved into my house for my second year of uni. So I mean, this is where I'm going to be posting videos from. Hopefully uh, everything is looking nice. The audio quality, the chess quality, um, and yeah, hopefully, hopefully things are going well. And I should be back to uploading uh, much more regularly and doing a few more live streams. I think the Wi-Fi here is good. Me and my housemates decided to pay for the, uh, the, the best Wi-Fi package just because 
well, I say me and my housemates, it, I, I forced them all to pay for the best Wi-Fi package because I wanted to stream. Um, so yeah, you're going to see a lot more activity from the channel in the coming days. Um, this should post, it should be Monday when this posts. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, like, comment, subscribe. Check out the channel memberships if you're interested. Thank you to all of you who've been patient um, and stuck around waiting for the next upload. I've seen some of your comments. I just really uh, haven't had the time recently to be very active on youtube just trying to keep the youtube shorts going for you know the overall channel growth etc but yeah all of you really appreciate it if you want personal chess coaching check out the google form in my bio i'm getting in touch with some of you now that i'm uh, at uni literally today's the first day that i've got here everything's established everything's set up uh, i might get a magnus carlson poster for behind me who knows anyway enough of waffling i'll see you in the next one goodbye